with Jesse Simonton, Austin Price, I'm Brent Hubbs, a little post-game podcast. Tennessee big winners tonight. Beat South Carolina 41-21. Simple question, Jesse Simonton. You, you picked Tennessee to win. What's your biggest takeaway from Tennessee winning tonight? Well, there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of storylines from this, but I, I think it just kind of has to be uh, the complimentary football nature of this game. They, they got major contributions from every single aspect you know, on this team, whether it was on special teams when you scored two touchdowns, whether it was defensively, you give up a touchdown on the first play of the game and you turn around and pitch a shutout in the second half, or whether it was on offense where uh, you, you rotate three quarterbacks. Garantano goes from the GOAT a week ago to a guy that leads two big touchdown drives. JT Shrout uh, throws a 55-yard touchdown in his uh, you know, first true action of his career. I mean, this was this was kind of the coalesce, coalescing, I think, of, of Tennessee turning the corner, and I, I do, I, I truly do believe that. Austin, your takeaway? I, I just can't believe how they responded. I mean, so many things happen in this football game, whether it be the first play of the game. Uh, at one point, both tackles, both starting tackles, were out of the game. Jerome Middleton goes out. You know, JG comes in and is playing lights out and then he gets knocked out I mean what are the odds you know the kids overcome this and he gets knocked out and then JT Shrout comes in and they take a deep shot on second and nine and and boom touchdown I mean they throw for 352 yard or 51 yards I'm super impressed by the resiliency of this group and it almost kind of embodies the season how they were left for dead after you know an 0-2 start this team was kind of, you know, I won't say left for dead tonight, but, you know, they had a lot of bumps in the road, and they, you know, they just kept going down the Oregon Trail. I wouldn't even say the 0-2. I, the, this team looks so different than what it did when you and I did the postgame pod walking out of Gainesville. That, that's really what – it, it, it looks like a two different team. Yeah. I mean, like the BYU – no, just the whole damn I, I thing. Like, ten, it's I the whole thing. I thought Tennessee in Gainesville was uncompetitive. Yes. I thought they were an uncompetitive football team is what I thought. Uh, that was my takeaway from leaving Gainesville, 34-3. It wasn't just a score. It was just – you just never felt like Tennessee was a, was a factor. They were just uncompetitive. And, and I'm with you, for the, in a month, a little over a month time, for them to go from that to the complete game we saw tonight says a lot about the coaching, says a lot about this team. Um, and, and I think it's just – I think everybody's figuring each other out. This is suddenly now Tennessee – one of the elites in the East, or I don't know. I'm not saying that, but I think we all felt like this was a game, Jesse, that they needed to win. It was an important game, and Tennessee not only won, but they showed themselves very well. Absolutely. I mean, and I, and I, and I truly believe this. I mean, I thought South Carolina was a very flawed football team. Um, yes, they have a very nice win on their resume by winning at Georgia, but statistically, they were dominated in that game. That was a, a game that you know turned on a bunch of turnovers. J.T. Shroud said it today. They thought that you know. Tennessee watching that film of the Georgia game that they could expose South Carolina defensively a little bit so long as they didn't hand them the football and they did Tennessee's wide receivers won in one-on-one coverage Jawan Jennings probably played the best game of his career and he's had a lot of career highlights but he was phenomenal tonight Daryl Taylor played one of the better games of his career Daniel Batuli played one of the better games. Of I his think it's career. I think it's the best game Daniel Batuli's ever. I know he had twenty three tackles or whatever. But that's misleading because they played Georgia that Tech. Play. But when you go fifteen tackles, a tackle for loss, a pass breakup, a block, block punt, punt, and, and a touchdown, touchdown, pretty good night Phenomenal. at the office. Yeah, yeah. And, and and you know, and then they and then you so when you sprinkle in those are already Tennessee's best players. But then when you sprinkle in contributions from Jameer Johnson comes in and outside of a couple dumb penalties holds up pretty well. Sean Schamberger has quietly had a nice season, but was really good today in the slot. Kayvon Bennett hit the quarterback three times. You know, I mean, it was just they got they got a uh, sack out of uh, again. These are the Butch Jones All Stars. I mean, John too. Yeah. These are the Butch. Jones. I mean, like all these guys were were guys that that Butch recruited. And to Jeremy's credit and to this staff's credit, uh, they have helped develop those guys or further develop them. And Pruitt said it after the game too. I mean, like. Everybody from those guys to the young guys have bought in, and that's how they were able to respond by giving up a 75-yard touchdown in the first play and not blinking. That, that's where I think they're different. Is you, you don't see this I mentality, and I, you know, I'm not saying that you know the guys that left were were you know cancers to the team, but I do think you know when they trimmed a little bit of fat and everybody looked in the room and you know is that it? Does anybody else want to go? And then I think everybody else settled in to you know. To, to just playing football and, and being there for each other. You know, we started the night, and there was a thread on the GQ talking about 
JG's body language on the on the vol walk and, and all that stuff. I watched that kid at, at the end of the vol walk, and he and he he interacted with fans. He came up, he hugged his dad. Before that, his dad pulled JT Shroud over there, and you know gave him a hug, said good luck tonight on your start. You know, I'm not apologizing for JG's boo boo last week or his poor play the first seven games. That was you know it was not good. But I think the kid showed tonight how kind of mentally tough he is. I mean, while he may have kind of been scatterbrained at times this season, I mean, he came in tonight. And, of course, I made the joke that Garantano returned and got rid of Garantano. But, I mean, a couple of those throws tonight, I mean, especially the, the, the two-play drive to Juwan, I mean, he Invasion got the, of ball. the body snatchers. He, he got the ball. Looked like Tua. A couple of times early, he, he you know, the, the, one, the 48 pass to Callaway, if he throws that on time, as Jesse pointed out, that's a touchdown. Right, but, yeah, but that one was but, late. But those two, right there at the end of the half, it almost it was like boom, boom, and well, and he hit, he hit one the Palmer on an outcut yeah. that was on time. That was everything. The thing I'll take away, Jared's Jared. He's got flaws. He will finish his career at Tennessee with flaws as a quarterback. That's just the bottom line. The one thing you can say you you can say about him, he's not going to quit. And there's a lot of people who would probably turn their pads in Monday or, or Sunday. You know, I mean, he's graduate. He can go wherever he wants to next year. If he don't go to. to to be ready to go whenever you were called upon and to engage all week long. I mean, this the guy was throwing worm burners on Tuesday in practice, <laughs> right? He really was. I mean, he didn't throw it well from what we what we heard on Wednesday and Thursday at practice. But to get yourself ready to play does show some mental toughness. And and I'll give Pruitt credit. He has not quit on, on he the He never kid. abandoned him. He never abandoned the kid. Publicly. Publicly, right. And, and, and well, I think what Jeremy said, and we talked about this, you know, on that – the I guess the what it was the pod or whatever last week coming out of the Alabama game, it certainly changed my uh, opinion on Jarrett's future for the rest of this season with the Vols, with the way that Jeremy decided to publicly defend him and to publicly back him. And I'll give Tennessee credit today, you know, the fact that they made Jarrett available, you know, after this game, and he kind of you and know he was willing to talk. And he was he willing to said talk. No. Yeah, and he was willing to talk, and he came out. You know, I asked him about what happened in Alabama, and he he continued to kind of toe the company line about miscommunication. But then he did note, which is what AP had reported, and we other we had all several of us had heard about. You know, that he went into literally that Sunday, walked into the room, and and kind of apologized individually to each position group, and then to the team, and said, "My bad, my fault won't happen again." And to your credit, he didn't quit. He came back. He prepared this week. And while he may be, uh, you know, telling a little bit of white lie about calling the last couple th- the weeks, he used the word smooth a couple of times. I- I- I'm sure that's not, you know, what's happening truly internally. But he did have a smile on his face. And he has been, right when Brian Mauer scored a touchdown a couple of weeks ago, he was the first guy there to congratulate him. He said tonight he was pounding the table, you know, in the locker room when JT Shrout scored the touchdown. And, and you know, I thought he was mature in his answers of, I just want Tennessee to win, and that showed tonight. And it showed from the it, from him on down to the passion and enthusiasm that Jawan showed on down. You know th- this kind of you know all for one message that Jeremy's you know delivering seems to be resonating. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, this kind of notion that like you know he's not a team guy. I mean, I think he he was not a team guy that night against Georgia Tech because he'd kind of been told a you know a lie about you know his playing time. Other, other than that, I mean, this dude's been. There for his teammates. I mean, he's you know he's stuck in there, and uh, you know, I mean, again, I you just kind of inter- watching him interact tonight, walking down the the tunnel and stuff like that. I mean, he was engaged, and I, I'm shocked. I mean, I mean, I really am. You, we all watched him on the practice field Tuesday, and he did not look that way Tuesday. But he's also a guy that's been in the program for so many years. You know, Tuesday routes on air. I'm sure is not. <laughs> not something that he's real enthused by. Uh, probably not. I, so this too, it's the the hire of Jim Chaney is paying off. Well, and, he and, got and, his one point five tonight. Yeah, and, I mean, and, that, and I know we've talked a lot about his salary. I saw a message on the on the GQ. That we, we always bring up his salary, but he, I mean, it's brought up because he's making a lot of money. But when he was hired, the one thing we all talked about the advantage in hiring him was he knew this conference. He knew it. He got people open against Alabama, wasn't enough to win. He got people open against Georgia, they didn't have enough horses to win it. He got people open and, and, and managed the game against Mississippi State and a good, you know, Bob Shoup, a defense he knows. 
And then tonight, the guy Tennessee's not been able to beat, he dialed up and got people open everywhere. The benefits of hiring a veteran good play caller who is experienced in this division showed up tonight, and Tennessee fans are optimistic because you think it's going to show up the rest of the season. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I I tweeted this. I mean, I really thought that this was Jim Cheney's kind of masterpiece, and and you know, Jawan was kind of sitting in as the Mona Lisa. That you know, it kind of all it kind of all derived around him. But there was other paintings that ended up being you know great as well. But they they decide they schemed around fifteen, and then they said, how can we get other guys over? And and we said we said it in the preseason. Tennessee's receivers are the best part of this offense, and today. They showed why. They won one-on-one matchups. They got down the field. Tennessee called some nice max protect plays. Um, I thought the, the, the second and nine play action shot, I mean, that's stuff that, you know, advanced analytics gurus in the NFL are, are pining for all the time now because that's now, you know, there's no you're wasting a down there if you just run the ball for three yards, four yards. Tennessee goes shot play, touchdown, right in stride. Uh, this was just—it was just a—it was a great, great game plan and great execution by Jim Chaney and the whole offensive staff. And again, credit goes to Will Friend. You know, the offensive line continues to play well. Ken Law is one of the best defensive linemen in the country. Trey, Trey got him tonight. Yeah, and he was—he was getting stymied, but by a big 73 on Orange. Yeah, so I thought again. I thought Trey Smith played well. Continues to play. Clearly, they don't want to mess with him and move him to a different position. We saw, you know, Jameer goes out and plays tackle, and then they flipped Wanye, which says a lot about Wanye's ability to flip from left to right, where he's not practiced a whole lot of right tackle. Yeah, and he did have a couple bad plays right away at right tackle, and then he go, he came back in and seemed to find his footing a little bit. I was flipping over to defense. Pitched the shutout in the second half. It's not like, I mean, South Carolina was not very good the first quarter, aside from one play. But then they found something for those back-to-back drives that they scored at the end of the half in the second quarter. Looked like they had a real rhythm. What what Tennessee do to shut South Carolina out the way they did in the second half? What was the defensive change? Well, I mean, without watch, with it, you know, without just, just through the naked eye. I, well, through the naked eye, it seemed like in those two drives that that South Carolina had some success. You know, they were running some of those trap and pull plays with Feaster kind of waiting and then hitting hitting kind of the edge. That edge wasn't there in the second half, and then. Once Tennessee took that away and really bottled that up, Holinsky just he didn't have it. Right, and, and, and he and, has limitations. And he anyway. has limitations anyway. I don't know how 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 healthy or not he was, but uh, you know some of the he was throwing behind on a lot of those RPOs. Again, credit goes to some of Tennessee's sticky coverage. I thought Schamberger played pretty well in the slot tonight. Uh, you know, I mean the, the Edwards catch was just a phenomenal catch. Uh, and Tennessee had the bust on the Nigel, you know, Nigel bit down, or missed the tackle, excuse me, after McCullough and, and Batuli messed up on the first play. But I thought it was just they, they, they basically sealed the edge. You had just, I mean, Daryl Taylor was just wrecking havoc. And Bennett was giving them legitimate pressure off the, off the other side. And again, even when Daryl went out the first play after Taylor goes out being injured, DeAndre Johnson comes off the edge and, and, and flashes. So, I mean... You know, that defensive line, and I have to continue to give credit to Darrell Middleton. I know he got, you know, disqualified, but this is guys we all pointed out early in fall camp when they would go through, you know, individual stuff. I mean, like, they would have to encourage him to be more aggressive, encourage him to be more aggressive. And, and, you know, just to a man, that defensive line, what Tracy Rocker's done and Will Friend, I didn't think was possible. And then maybe Will Friend, just because they had that young talent on the offensive line, but defensively up front, I, what Tracy Rockers got out of those guys the last they, three or four weeks. They also, again, this will be something I'll be able to tell better tomorrow on watching the tape and can, seeing the snap. They shrunk the rotation today on defense, too. Crouch did not play that much. Um, when they went to some of those third down rabbits package, they, act, they even brought that, that was when they would bring like Theo on the field and Batuli played some Buck down to some rusher. Uh, and then so, he came off the field sometimes. And then too. he came off the field sometimes on third down, too, when they brought in, again, that's when they, you know, they would have the Schamberger, McCullough, Theo, all those guys out there, Kenneth George. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting because, I, like, Butler didn't quite play as much. You had Garland playing some mini snaps. Um, it was just it, the rotation got shrunk, it seemed like, a little bit today. All right. As Tennessee moves forward, the, the other question is, 
how big was tonight for recruiting? It's too early to say, okay, we haven't talked to a bunch of kids, but as you saw the atmosphere, the fact that Tennessee won Austin, how much is this going to resonate with a, with a recruiting crop that you had in town that was pretty good? Couldn't have been better talent. in front of Big O. Yeah, Big O's sister, when, she went, when, they went, when he went to A&M, she did not go. She came up here. That was a big emphasis of the staff to make sure that she came on this official visit because, you know, she goes to Ole Miss, but she's getting ready to go to dental school. And so it, it's important, you know, what she thinks is very important to him. So, I, you know, could not have been any better from an on-the-field product, defensively, crowd, the win. You had Tyler Barron's been tweeting after the game. You know, Jay Hardy obviously is on his official visit. I think he's very close. I'm not sure he does it coming out this weekend, but I think it's imminent. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, uh, to do it in front of Thayu Jones Bell, man, he got in here late. He arrived at like three o'clock off the flight from South Florida. You know, we'll see. You know what his impressions are coming out of this one because obviously they showed they can throw the ball, which goes a long way. And him seeing quarterbacks complete downfield passes, a young quarterback, a young too. quarterback too makes. And, and then of course he'll know about Mauer. Right. So I mean, it, it. I think it resonates very much so. Certainly is a, a, a big win. And, again, I think as we close it up, Jesse, program win may be too strong. I don't know. But I think when you look at the completeness of this win and the way Jeremy Pruitt managed his team this week, the way he managed officiating during the week, maybe he shouldn't have got the penalty here. I, I have a hard time saying that he talked to the official the way he talked to Austin in that question uh, about <laughs> Terrell Middleton. I saw the animation. I mean, it wasn't that way. But I think when you look at the week that Jeremy Pruitt had and the way he managed his team and the way, what his staff did, this is a sign head coach is growing and getting better and the program is starting to find its identity a little bit. Yeah, I mean, in my, for me, when I say the Vols turn the corner, I think it's for this season. Sure. Because there's just so many unknowns heading into next season. And, and again, a lot of the guys we named are guys that won't be here next year. Uh, but I do think from where this team was when we walked out of Gainesville and then it wasn't competitive and they didn't, quote, respond, you know, how Jeremy wanted for them to take that bye week and to at least show some fight against Georgia and then to, to just scheme up a great game plan against Mississippi State. You do punch Alabama. A little, you punch back at Alabama. And then who knows if you don't lose your quarterback. I know they had Tua, lost Tua. But then to have played, I don't know, this is probably the most complete game they've played in, in years. Well, I mean, it, it's, that, it, yeah. you are turning the corner in year two. You are now, you have, I, I think we, the three of us would agree, sitting here right uh, October 26th, based on how Tennessee has played the last few weeks, I would be surprised if they don't make a bowl game now. I don't know if they win out, but I'd be surprised if they don't get to six. Well, you know, Kelly Bryant's went down in this game. If against he doesn't return Kentucky. against Kentucky, if he does not, if he can't play, that changes that game dramatically. Um, and then, of course, you know, as Tennessee gets healthier, what's what's Daryl Taylor's? And he said after the game, he's fine. JG had a wrap on his wrist, left wrist, left wrist. Um, you know, well, where's Mauer? What, what what's Darnell Wright? I mean, yeah, because Darnell Wright was hobbled yeah. I mean, clearly after the game, but he did stay out there. He was in his pads. Yeah, if you can get some of those guys back, Wayne Morris's arm was clearly bothering him as he left. But you're right, if you can get healthy. I think the big takeaway in terms of turning the corner, players buying in, playing hard, executing the plan better, staff coaching to this team, to this particular roster, better than they did early in the year where it was a little bit of do, do our stuff. Now let's take our stuff and mold it around what you can do. I think they've done a better job of that, which is another reason why this team's gotten better. Yeah, I agree. Uh, were you, I know we're getting out the door here. Were you surprised because Mauer wasn't going to play that he suited up and went through everything? Not after Tuesday. I mean, the guy, the guy run through sprint out passes and then went to Vanderbilt and had tests on his, <laughs> on his uh, neurological test Wednesday afternoon. So, look, I'm, I'm sure in the, in the eyes of the coaching staff, it's an opportunity to get some reps, right? Get, get some, like, you're going to get a lot of get better reps in the middle of, of pregame warm-ups. But. Yeah, the, an the answer to that question is probably what Jeremy said on everything else. I decided to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That was classic, I decided man. to. He I decided to. <laughs> What's the quarterback competition going to look like next week, Jeremy? 
I'll decide it too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he's deciding. He decided everything very well for this football team on this night as Tennessee beats South Carolina in a big time fashion. Volunteers win 41 to 21. We'll have plenty of coverage on the General's Quarters. For Austin Price and Jesse Simonton, I'm Brent Hubbs.